Good evening and welcome to News Night tonight. My name is Charles Odongso. And with me in the studio, as usual, Andrew Mwenda, old man of the clan, the MD, managing director of the Independent Magazine. Is that right? Thank you. He's a man of titles. Now, Andrew, good to have you back. Thank you. Andrew, today we should be discussing something that uh, people, many people seem to have forgotten. Um, last year, one of the biggest news we had was the story of Sejusa, the man who was originally known as General David Tinyefuza. He's lost in the news, but we have to be discussing that today. Now, what do you make of his silence? He's in London, now called a dissident. I think now a deserter officially? Well, I want to know whether he has been silent. He has actually been involved in the news. Perhaps he's not generating much news in Uganda, but he has been involved in a series of activities in the UK, organizing a political party aimed at uh, removing the NRM government and promoting democracy. And you know that he's being replaced in parliament tomorrow, and that is why we are supposed to be discussing him, actually. Yes. Now, out there you have to know that tomorrow, General Sejusa, who has been one of the ten army MPs, is going to be replaced. What do you make of that? Is that his political end? I think that uh, David Nyefuza holding other factors constant, rendered himself politically irrelevant the moment he ran out of Uganda. You see, when you leave your country, especially a country like Uganda, go to exile, it is very difficult for you to reconstruct your political profile. I remember that when Dr. Besiger ran out of Uganda in 2001 and went to South Africa, I spent the period 2001 to 2005 trying to convince him to return and that his only path to political relevance was A, to abandon his threats then that he was going to launch an armed struggle against the state, and then two, to advise him that if he comes and launches a civic struggle here, he will become much more relevant. And Bessie finally heeded the advice of so many others, especially his colleagues in FDC, and returned. Now, Tinjafuza, for as long as he is in the United Kingdom, I can tell you he will have very limited political relevance to the political process in Uganda. On December 14, mm. he announced the Freedom and Unity Front Party. And he talks about a new healing process, that a new constitutional order must be started in Uganda. Is that something that credibly can be talked about here back home? Well, let me put it this way. First of all, this party that he has formed, how is it going to galvanize support in Uganda? I have been thinking, you see, I have not talked to David Nyavuza. He used to be a very good friend of mine. We've not talked, so it is very difficult for me to know what his motivations are. But I felt when he ran away that uh, he was taking a very high personal risk. And in my own rational calculations, there must be a political dividend or a benefit that he was looking at that far exceeds the immediate cost to himself that he was uh, inflicting on himself. And I have been wondering, so what is that benefit that Tinyafuza was looking for? Was this a stupid miscalculation? And Tinyafuza is not a stupid person. Is there some international force that he has uh, backed him and is going to allow him to reap benefits far in excess of the cost that this process of falling out of the NRM has has done. But in terms of him forming a political party and that political party having any relevance whatsoever, Neil, I can promise you, here FDC has a strength yeah. because Besige is here. He's every day on the street. Oh, because Muntu is here. Have you uh, declared Muntu not a very strong contending party? I, I should tell you Why that are you still mentioning Besige? I should tell you that uh, I think it will be very difficult for any opposition person to emerge and gain the kind of cult following that Besiger has. Why? Because Besiger has achieved what is the most important thing in leadership, which is sacrifice. He has been arrested and charged with rape, terrorism and treason. He has been beaten and tear gassed. He has been, his brother has been killed. His wife has been chased out of the country. His siblings have suffered. His businesses have been overrun. So many things have happened to him and he has remained standing and true to his beliefs. There is nothing that builds a great profile for any political leader than sacrifice. You, okay, you let's, come back, let's come back to the fall, to the line of mm. uh, General Sejusa. General Sejusa is an army man. Museveni is an army man. The messages we are talking about, all army men. Muntu is an army man. Muntu is a, an, an army general. Does that worry you that 28 years, and Uganda will be, Museveni will be celebrating 28 years next week of 
since it, it took over in 86. That since then, we are still so obsessed as a country. We are still talking so much about army people, men who came through the gun, being the real political contenders. Does that worry you? No, Shouldn't we be talking of civilians like Andrew Mwenda if he can contend? I don't know whether it worries me because you must place Uganda's uh, presidential politics in our historical context. One of the biggest problems Uganda has had since independence, say between independence and 1986, was that uh, it had uh, rapid changes of government. You had a government from 62 to 66 that collapses, 66 71, it collapses, 71 78, that was the longest 70 government. It collapses then uh, between 1979 and 80, uh, 1980, you had about uh, Lule, Benaisa, then Mwanga, then Milton Oboti. Then uh, Oboti is there for four years, he collapses, there is Tokelo, he collapses. So, one of the fears, if you look at opinion polls of most Ugandans, is political transitions in Uganda have been wrought with the instability, death, violence, and chaos. So Museven has given Uganda a very long reign. In other words, he has put the ghosts of, of, of instability behind us. But it also tells you something that Museven has achieved that because he has been able to exercise effective control over the security process, over the military and security services. Therefore, even when people are looking at the replacement from seven, if you look at the Afrobarometer surveys of 2010, 2011, most people are saying going into an election, our biggest concern is stability, yeah. is security. It is such a profound thing in a country that last saw instability of, or change of government 28 years ago, but people still remember that. So, therefore, a person to challenge Museveni must be having military credentials. Can you control the army? Can you ensure that there is transition and stability? Will you stop a military coup from happening? Will you crush a rebellion that will emerge? These are important and to, legitimate to, concerns. To what extent should that military credential be? Can it be closer to someone like Mbabazi, who I have had you probably maybe right off or not so close to um, to the strength of power or to hold it no, or Mbaba, to take Mbaba, it. is a very strong candidate. Remember that Mbaba has a security background. He was involved in the recruitment of foreign uh, Must forces. it only be to that extent? He has, been, he has been a minister of defense. He has been a minister of security. He has been close to President Museveni. I personally think that uh, if Mbaba took over office, there would be a peaceful transition because he has had sufficient experience, executive experience in a government as a prime minister, as a minister of defense, as a close confidant of the president, as a minister of security. So he has, he had been previously a director general of external security organization. So he has been a minister of foreign affairs. Mbaba has uh, the credentials of a president and he, I think that he would have some control of the military and security agenda. Back to Sejusa as we mm. wind up today. He is no longer here. You say he's too far from the center of power in Kampala. Mm. What does this make? The fact that President Museveni has, by and large, kept quiet, except once, if I remember, when on, I think, the State of the Nation yeah, address, it, it, when it he talked about him. What does that mean? It shows he that doesn't Tinyafusa want to talk about Tinyafusa. Not necessarily. It shows that Tinyafusa is irrelevant. Assuming Tinyafusa was creating waves within Uganda, Museveni would have talked about him. And the fact that I'm saying I can ignore him, Tinyafusa is a marginal inconvenience in the politics of Uganda. If you ask me about message, I think that message has... What do you mean marginal inconvenience? He can only inconvenience Museven at a personal level by him as a security person saying, ah, since I was in the system, you killed the Mayomba and Wapakabula and things like that. And he actually, he actually in one of the diatribes he sent in, I think, exactly. around August, he said, this is a different cup of tea. And he, w he was warning Museveni to be careful about drinking it because he knows him. Mm. Does that make any sense? Nothing. Nothing. So when he is replaced Those tomorrow, what threats. do you think? What, who, who do you think is a, 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 a Have real Have you contender? read a book called Darkness at Noon? Yes. So when Rubashov is arrested, the book begins when Rubashov is being arrested and uh, I think Arthur Koesler, the author, says that immediately he was being walked out of his uh, apartment, somebody turned on the taps and the water flowed evenly. What does that mean? It means that as he, rather, <laughs> Rubashov left the stage, everything continued as normal. Let me tell you, if you told me Besiji, Besiji is a much more serious person. Tinyefusa is an extremely irrelevant factor in Uganda's politics. That is why he will be replaced tomorrow and right now, even if he issues a statement, no one will be interested in listening to him. He created a short-term excitement 
and that's why it ended. If Tijafuza wants to be relevant, he should get onto the plane, return to Uganda, be prepared to go to jail, be like Mandela, and there may be a hope that he can reconstruct his political career. But as an exile, hope not being with the other exiles in London, no. So he has to come back and be beaten, caned around and all that. I, I should also tell you, Dongotho, by the way, that uh, you can manage Uganda's politics and build a strong and effective political party without being beaten on the street. Besija goes on the street because his strategy is to provoke police to beat him so that he can be in the newspapers. But I do not think that Besija has a strategy of building a political party or a political movement. Well, thank you so much, Andrew. That was Andrew Mwenda, the analyst and old man of the clan. That was Newsnight tonight.